Hi, Justice Seekers. Good evening. Um, I know that you guys were expecting to see me on Kelly's um, What's the Obsession show. And so I thought I'd get on here real quick to uh, just let you guys know that she had to reschedule it for 830. Um, but I did want to talk for a minute. Um, I had mentioned earlier, and if you're on live with me, if you can let me know that I have sound, if I do have sound, that would be great. <laughs> if I don't, then I'll delete it and re-record. Um, so about the Kylie Rodney case, everything that I say is my opinion only, and it is purely for, um, the sake of conversation and having an open discussion. Hey, Rogue House. Hey, Savvy. Um, here you find, thank you so much. So thanks for being there on the other side. Um, it's so nice to have an audience and to have you guys, um, uh, my, my regulars. I really appreciate you. So I just wanted to let you know live in person that Kelly had to reschedule for 8.30 since I had told people that she was doing her live at 7. And <clears throat> I'm going to try to be on it for a little bit, but um, I told her that I wouldn't be able to last too long. I'm just a very early um, bird these days. So I did want to talk about the Kylie Rodney case for a minute here with you guys, though. Hmm. I like that name, hoping for answers. <laughs> so, and I'll put my glasses on so so you guys know that I'm not an imposter. I really am me. I just, I don't have my notes. I didn't have a couple of notes, but I'm just kind of winging it. So earlier today, I brought up um, the thing about violence against women and specifically women committing violence against women and how it just makes me even more sick than men committing violence against women. Um, and I mentioned a couple other cases. Um, Mo Wilson, who was allegedly shot by another woman over a guy. Oh, we've got um, Nicole Kessinger's potential involvement. Or, I mean, we can say she was involved with Chris Watts, obviously. But she was potentially involved in the demise of his wife and children. Um, you know, a, a very, very sick familicide that I, I just don't think there's any way possible he could have done it on his own. If you know the Chris Watts case, the man is spineless. He doesn't think for himself. Um, women control him. So, and, and his freaking cock controls him. So the, the sexual motivation behind these uh, murders too, like with um, Kylie, with Watts with Mo Wilson. And then the other one that I mentioned that is the one that I really wanted to discuss the similarities real quick is Amanda Knox. So um, I didn't know that much about an Amanda Knox. I mentioned earlier how I had lived in Seattle when it happened and I just saw what was on the news and I saw how pretty she was and it just seemed she was getting a raw deal. Um, but uh, the true crime rocket science educated me. Um, and it was really good insight. Um, she actually was convicted twice of Meredith Kircher's murder and she was acquitted. She was kind of quasi exonerated, but you know, they knew she did it. And like I said, she was convicted twice. So she was convicted and then she got out on an appeal and then she was convicted again and then, you know, if I'm remembering right, CNN was not only paying for all of her family's travels, but they were also probably paying for her legal defense. Um, you know, she was a pretty girl and, you know, she was privileged, but her parents weren't loaded. And, um, you know, the Italian courts are not the American courts. So it was much different than anybody had any idea. And, you know, it was pretty apparent that she did do it and that she had absolutely no remorse. And, you know, the whole like cartwheels in the interrogation room and making out with her boyfriend. And <clears throat> I, I mean, I don't know how much about the case you guys know, but I wanted to bring it up with the Kylie Rodney case because the situation was a party night and a jealous Amanda with a very lovely Meredith Kircher. 
and what the Italian um, police thought had happened was sort of like a sex game gone bad or something to that effect. You know, there was um, the boyfriend and then the other guy that were there, allegedly. <laughs> they all served prison time for it. Um, and now they've all been released. But you know, sadly, Meredith Kircher's family feels like they've gotten no real justice, and it really sounds like they haven't. Um, and I don't know that they can do anything about that. Um, I was one reason I was really glad to learn about this case is because Amanda Knox is very convincing. You know, I'd seen her do some public speaking just, you know, on YouTube and stuff like that, um, 48 hours, and I thought, oh, good for her. She's turned her life around, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I, it's my opinion that she's a true sociopath, um, much parallel to Sammy. Um, and so I was thinking today, you know, I've always thought there was a sexual element to this. I, I hate to think those things, but, um, I just wonder if it wasn't something similar to this like sex game idea that the police uh, believe that Amanda Knox was doing with Meredith Kircher. Um, you know, I, I really hate to say it and I especially hate to say it because it is conjecture. It is um, opinion, but I do think that there's evidence to suggest it. And I think that that's kind of, where all of this has been going is looking into the bigger picture of the whole like sex trafficking and all that. Um, but just the damn crazy ass kids and their parties and their drugs and their sex. And it wouldn't surprise me in the least if the thing that was going on with um, Meredith Kircher and Amanda Knox and the guys in that situation is extremely similar to what happened <clears throat> with Kylie and Sammy and the guys in that situation. So, um, you know, Meredith Kircher, like Kylie, was much more of an exotic beauty. If you've seen pictures of her, she's not like the striking little cutie pie like uh, Amanda Knox is. She's more of a subtle, unique, rare bird. And again, it's that same type of situation where you have this cute, obnoxious beauty queen who thinks she's a beauty queen, who's used to getting everybody's attention and used to getting her way, and then maybe not getting her way. And then here is the threat of this lovely young person that, you know, is just stealing the show. And we all know how difficult rejection is, right? And that that is where a lot of domestic violence comes into play um, when people get dumped, when people get cheated on. And, you know, I just think that there's something big getting hidden. It's kind of like the elephant getting swept under the rug. This whole thing is so disgusting, and I'm hoping that this is going to kind of be the direction that the um, conversation is going to be with Kelly on her panel tonight. Um, it's definitely where I'm coming from, you know. All that emotion that I felt with the case yesterday with um, the real, real justice and their episode 65, and... You know, I always, it's always better, like for me the next day to have a chance to let things sink in and process and reflect on it. And I have a very different theory of what actually happened, but what, what struck me so emotionally with that episode of Real Justice was that he did such a, an outstanding job of laying out the foundation of his case and stating what he thinks happened. And I think he's very likely right about a lot of it. But to me, it's like the G-rated version. And it's kind of like the nicest, friendliest version of this extremely disgusting, horrible, dark, evil grossness. So I liked his version and I thought, you know, 
that's probably pretty much what happened. Let's just call it good. <clears throat> and, you know, my, my suspicions go much darker than that, but, um, I like the G rated version a lot better, but what really struck me, I think what really made me so emotional is I thought that his scenario that he laid out is best case scenario. That's like the version with all the rainbows and puppies. That's all that happened. You, you hear where I'm coming from? Like that it wasn't premeditated and it wasn't super disgusting and humiliating and God awful and vile as you can imagine. So all of that was what got me so emotional is I thought this is a great theory. This is a nice clean theory relative to what I think probably actually happened. And I would much rather just go with this one, which is what I think the general public is doing. I think that that's, and that's why I feel like it's important to talk about it right now, because I feel like everyone wants to kind of wrap it up and put a nice red ribbon bow on it and stick it on the shelf and say, there, that case is done. And, you know, I, I think that these are some really dark, disgusting people. I mean, when you look at the photographs and the videotapes of all of these characters, all these kids that were in the party, that were in the know, you know, there's roughly about 10 of them, I guess, when you've got Sammy, Mags, um, Kate. There's a couple other girls whose names I don't know that pop up every once in a while. And then you've got the obvious guys, the Nates, Jagger, <clears throat> and Philip, and um, Cody, and then um, Evan, and then there's another one, and then you got Chucky. Chucky's really, really freaky. Oh my God, lady, so needed your energy. Bad night. You always inspire. So thankful to find you. Oh, that's so nice. What up, Justice? <laughs> that's so nice. Because I was like, I really shouldn't go on, you know, like a third show and then a fourth. But um, I wanted to come on because I wanted to put this out there so we can talk about it on Kelly's show later. Um, because it's, it's really creepy shit. And I don't want to talk about it. And I especially don't want to be the one to talk about it, right? Um, I like you know, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm fucking dead wrong. I hope that it has no bearing in reality, but I have reason to believe that it is similar to what happened the night of Meredith Kircher getting killed in her own bedroom in, in her apartment of, you know, for people who aren't familiar with that story. It's a really, really heart rendering um, heart wrenching story. Um, and then Meredith Kircher was such a beauty and so talented. She was actually in a music video. You guys probably don't know that. I had no idea until I did all this deep dive with, um, true crime rocket science and, and all of his, um, episodes about it. So the video, you can probably find it on the Google A <laughs> just with Meredith Kircher, K E R C H E R. And oh, I forget the name of the band, but if you Google her name, music video, it'll probably pop right up. Um, and it, she, she's just lovely. She's just an absolute delight. And the, the real jealousy came from a specific boyfriend, somebody, you know, Amanda was just like sleeping with everybody. And this guy lived downstairs from them. And he kind of decided he wasn't interested in Amanda after all. He wanted to actually have a relationship with Meredith, not just a fling. And that had just started when, um, when Meredith got stabbed to death and Amanda's fingerprints were on the knife. Again, I don't know how much people know about the case because in America, the actual facts were really suppressed very, very successfully. Um, it's, it's pretty abundantly clear that Amanda was, um, the mastermind of it. It's okay to be emotional. It took me about three watches of the real justice episode 65 for it all to sink in so much to take in. Oh, that's so nice for you to say gumshoe granny, because, you know, I felt like, yes, it's valid. I'm feeling emotional. I want to put it out there. I think that we all need to know that it's okay to be emotional. 
So I made a choice to, you know, kind of be a train wreck and make my video. I intentionally did that because I'm think I'm normally not a train wreck. <laughs> I try to try to be um, composed, right? And I thought this is fine. And you know, like I said, even watching it, I had some distinct disagreements with the theory. But I don't know if I'm right. I don't know if real justice is right. But my takeaway was that real justice's theory is probably the G-rated version of what actually happened. And what actually happened might be even worse than what I think happened. Um, and, you know, I don't want to go off the deep end with the conspiracy theories, but we really don't know if she's deceased. We really don't know if that's her with the lack of IDing appropriately and just the whole freaking mess. We really don't know. Um, she could be getting trafficked right now. She could still be alive. I don't think it's that likely, but it's a possibility. And the good thing about talking about it is that even if it's not happening for Kylie, we know that those things happen and that it has happened for other people. And then you have that whole case with Jalissa Fuentes right there, um, missing two days later, and a lot of weird crap. I haven't followed that case so closely, but, you know, it from afar, it looks like she could have been um, assaulted, trafficked, and dumped, and then the brand new police chief just happens to stumble upon her at midnight by himself when he's not on duty. Like people, come on. <laughs> I mean, right away that caught my attention. Like, you know, the, the whole case, I was sort of paying a little bit of attention, of course, because AWP went to look for her. And then I knew that when they didn't find her, that law enforcement really thought that she was getting trafficked, that, that it was kind of ruled out that she had had a car accident since they didn't find her. And then they thought, well, it's even more likely now that she is getting trafficked. So, you know, just the whole idea of trafficking. And then we've got Summer Wells, um, even John Bonet Ramsey, it sounds like was trafficked before she was murdered. Um, it sounds like she was routinely trafficked as a toddler for people who've paid attention to that case. Mm. Excuse me. So anyway, I just wanted to get it out there. You know, sometimes it's hard to bring these things up. It's uncomfortable. It's the inconvenient truth, right? Um, so like I said, Kelly's going to do her panel at 830 on What's the Obsession. I'm going to try to be on it for as long as I can. And I think that it's a good direction to take it. Oh, CNY, did something happen? No, nothing happened. <laughs> Love your mug. <laughs> hey, what's going on? So nothing happened. Kelly just rescheduled her show that I had been telling everybody was going to start at 7. It's going to be at 8.30, the What's the Obsession open panel. And maybe you'd want to be on the open panel, CNY. Um, and I watched the video that you just did about um, trying to call people in Truckee to get information about Kylie. And I just, I love what you're doing. And I think it's very telling that nobody is going to talk about her. Um, it's very telling. So fortunately, nothing ha has happened to inspire me to come on other than just wanting to tell you guys in person since you were expecting to possibly see uh, the panel discussion at seven. I was trying to get on here as close to seven as I could. It's already almost eight. My God, I'm going to wrap it up. So at 8.30, Kelly's going to try to do her panel discussion and talking about the Kylie Rodney case. And I think it's important to talk about the disgusting stuff that I don't like to talk about with what I think very likely happened with Kylie and Sammy and the catfish crew that were there at that party and the potential for sexual assault um, and for multiple sexual assault. I mean, it, it's so horrifying, but it seems has always seemed to me like that was a very strong likelihood. I've always tried to find all the evidence that I could to support that that's not what happened. Um, and I just think that they are 
that that's why this whole thing has been on lockdown the whole time and, and it's still on lockdown. And here we are, October 27th, Thursday night. And do we really think they're going to come out with something informative on Tuesday, November 1st? I mean, personally, I don't. I don't expect them to come out with anything, literally nothing. Um, and if they do come out with anything, I expect that it'll be a crock of shit. I mean, that's all we've gotten so far is just a couple of small crocs of shit, right? I mean, the video, the other thing, um, the autopsy crap, the report. Um, I just don't think that they've been authentic in trying to um, solve a case. I mean, they're trying to say nothing criminal happened. They're trying to say nobody else was involved. I, I mean... I think they're trying to cover up a lot more than something small. That's, that's my point. I sense that they're trying to cover up a lot more than something small. And in a sense, you know, I always like to look at the bright side. That's good because they're letting a whole lot of cats out of the bag, just the whole history of that area and what they've been doing, what they've been up to. Um, Y'all check out what YouTube back Jeff is doing, getting a PI to investigate Kylie's situation. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. I've watched about half of his last one and I'm really excited to watch the rest of it. Um, also, as you guys know, Kevin Neese is on it. Kevin Neese is, um, you know, retired law enforcement and he has a very strong sense of commitment to Kylie and it's great. Um, he actually re-recorded his song today and man, that guy knows how to play guitar. He really knows how to play guitar. Um, I recommend checking out, um, Kylie's song, my new friends. <laughs> so thanks you guys. I'll read a couple more of your, um, comments here. Told Kevin niece that we all need to get a caravan of big black windowless vans and pile in there like a clown car posse. <laughs> And then descend on fucky trucky. Oh, another good one I heard today. I saw in somebody's comments on Kevin Neese's, uh, one of his uh, posts was sucky trucky. Man. And, you know, it's just horrible. What, what um, CNY has been doing today, she was making a bunch of phone calls trying to get a hold of somebody, anybody in Truckee who would just say anything real about Kylie and nobody, people were hanging up on her and shit and denying that they've ever heard of her, which come on, this is a small town. That's ridiculous. We know that's a lie. Who is supposed to come out on the first, um, the law enforcement, they had kind of committed to coming out on the first with their report, but then they, uh, kind of um, hoodwinked everybody with that report uh, almost, what, three weeks early? And um, so, you know, I don't know that they'll be doing anything more if they'll just say, oh, that's, we did it already. What are you talking about November 1st? Um, that's sort of what I expect from them because they've just been so shady and so shifty so far. Um, wouldn't it be nice if they would... Uh, step up and just magically become like real law enforcement. I mean, they're, they're such an embarrassment to um, our country. <laughs> I mean, they're an embarrassment to the free world, quite literally, aren't they? And, you know, let's just wrap this. Thanks you guys. I really appreciate you. And, you know, just spreading the love. It's really cool. Um, so we will see you on what's the obsession in just about 30 minutes, hopefully. So thanks for joining me and hope to see you soon. Have a great night. Talk to you then.